So whether it's soap bars or dog ears, I love P90 pickups, and I have a handful of guitars here equipped with P90 pickups of a couple different varieties. I thought to myself, let's put them to the pace, hear them against each other, and play them against a track to see how they work in a performance setting as well. You're really gonna hear a difference between those guitars because they're all in different bodies. We have some new ones, we have some vintage ones. I think you're gonna dig this, especially if you're on the fence about P90 pickups and getting a guitar that has those kinds of pickups in installed. I'm going to play four guitars in total and the backing track I'm going to use was created by my friends Ryan Medora and Derek Phillips. They created a blues backing track package and I'll put the link below for that. Before we hear these guitars, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and you can also check out my website workingclassguitar.com where you can find guitar lesson courses, individual lessons, and you can become a VIP and have a once a month Zoom hang with me and all of our members. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's hear some P90 pickups. <laughs> So I figured let's start the video with the oldest, most asked about guitar in my collection that happens to contain P90 pickups. It's the 61 Epiphone Casino, complete with dog ear P90s. But we'll get to the dog ear, the soap bar thing in a minute. But what I wanna tell you is that, you know, being a 61, this is a guitar that was, you know, evolved 30 years since the genesis of the P90 pickup or an electric guitar pickup. Uh, you started seeing the Charlie Christian pickup in the ES-150 models. And as that evolved, Walt Fuller, who was the head of the Gibson Electronic Department at the time, created something called the P13. And you can even find some of those out there on Reverb. They look very much like a metal P90. And then that continued to evolve and became the soap bar P90 as we know it. And then of course the dog ear style with the, you know, the extension here for the screw to mount. Now the dog ear P90, I can see it here, mounted to the body there and then has a shim under the bridge so that you can get the balance of the two. Like I said, this is a 61. Um, I had this guitar appraised and they did find that I believe the bridge pickup was rewound. That happens sometimes with older guitars, the pickups die and they need to be rewound. Um, but it's got an incredible warm, fat tone uh, and a lot of it to me has to do with the air that's being generated in this guitar. The other guitars that we play later, um, will have more of a denser sound to them because they're solid. There'll be one that has some chambering as well, but you'll get the idea that the P90 can take on a variety of different sounds depending on what it's mounted to, right? So here is the Dog Ear P90 in the neck, Epiphone Casino. Oh, let's turn the volume pedal up. And it's got a bark to it. These pickups really have some serious output to them, uh, and it's, it always shocks me when I plug it in against other guitar. And for an old guitar, it's got a really responsive neck, uh, you know, volume pot in the neck. Great sound if I turn the volume back up. When you take that edge off that neck pickup, yeah. Now, what I love about these guitars and what I wanted one for was for playing rhythm stuff in the studio. Especially doing that kind of stuff.
So when I go to the bridge, that's just as clean as I have the amp. It's pushing the amp. I mean, that sounds like the blues. It sounds like some, uh, some great Otis Rush. But man, you can hear how expressive and lively it is, and the pickups just sound killer. I mean, I'm a big fan of P90s. It doesn't overwhelm me like a humbucker might. Um, it's very expressive, it's very dynamic, and you're gonna hear that throughout these other guitars that we play. So that's the casino. You heard me play it in the beginning there. And uh, let's jump on to another guitar. <laughs> So the most modern guitar of the lot by far is this Yamaha Revstar. And my friends at Yamaha loaned me this guitar for another video that I did. You can check that out where I went through the guitar top to bottom, talked about everything from the body, the maple top and the mahogany back. It's a chamber body, their own brand of P90s. Uh, it's got some nice switching in there to give you a lot of different options. The neck is more Gibson-like than Fender, um, but it's, and it's got that flatter 12-inch radius, stainless steel frets, uh, enclosed Cluson style tuners. Uh, it's a solid guitar, came set up really, really great. I haven't touched it. I did raise the bridge pickup ever so slightly um, because it was a little lower output um, than the neck. So I wanted to match it up for my playing style, uh, but it sounds great. <laughs> Great chime. And then the bridge has a definite single coil quality. So in any case, this is sort of a middle of the road P90 guitar that's out there with a lot of options and still sounds like P90s, all right? Let's check out another P90 guitar. We'll play the same blues track and hear how it stacks up. So this is a really fun guitar, and you don't see too many of them kicking around out there. This is the PRS 594 Soap Bar model. Now you'll see a lot of 594s, both in single and double cut with humbuckers, and it's, you know, Paul's nod to the traditional set neck design, scale length, neck shape, and then this one, of course, has the classy gold top finish with P90s or Soap Bar pickups. Now the original pickups in this were Seymour Duncan Antiquities. I was pretty surprised at that, and I pulled them out because they were a little too mid-forward, um, didn't have that sort of smooth, buttery P90 thing I was looking for. And this guitar is pretty chunky and aggressive because it's mahogany, unlike the Casino, which is completely hollow. So the guitar's build obviously has an effect on the sound. Um, and the cool thing about these pickups is they're the Lindy Fralin hum-canceling or noiseless P90s and they really, really sound good. So here's the neck pickup. Super 
super smooth and really quiet as well. I don't have too much of a problem with the noise that comes from P90s. Frankly, to me, it's less than a, a Strat or a Tele. I've never had much of an issue. <laughs> Really, really great sound. So if we go to the middle. Great stuff. The bridge pickup. no bite it's because it's got this darker sound if I put my slap echo on little overdrive maybe It's a great sounding guitar. I'm happy to have it back. I loaned it to my dad for a while. He didn't have a P90 guitar. I was like, dad, take this one, check it out. He was sad to see it go, but I'll, I'll send him something else he can borrow, right? It's the least I can do, right? He's a guitar playing son, can send him a guitar to try. The PRS 594 with the Fralin noise canceling or hum canceling P90s. You should check these out. They're legit and they really work. All right, let's hear some more P90s in a different guitar. So I'm not going to end this video without showing you one of my favorite guitars. It's my 63 SG Junior. Absolutely love the sound of this guitar. Single dog ear P90. And what I want you to take a look at is the placement of that pickup in the body. I'll go here on the second camera. You can see it. See how it like kind of lives in the middle of the guitar? So it's got twang, but it's got punch. Where a tele pickup would be further back on the instrument and give you more bite. This gives you bite but some girth as well, all right? I used this guitar once on a 25, a 25 date tour. I used it on every song in the set except for one. So it had plenty of, uh, of options for me when I rolled the volume control down. I had a blast playing this. Plus it's only like six pounds or something. It's super light. Um, but if you listen to interviews with people like Charlie Starr or Phil X who love these kind of guitars, they'll tell you that this single pickup thing really does something with with the string resonance because there's no other pickup pulling on the strings. Now when you have a two, two humbucker or two pickup guitar or multi pickup guitar, those magnets are continually pulling on the strings regardless if they're on or not. Where this one doesn't have that happening. So you have some, according to the people that really believe this, and I have to think it's true, more resonance from this string. It's vibrating more freely. I can warm it up a little with the tone control, turn the volume down. <laughs> Listen to how clean that got. I love this guitar. It's never going anywhere. It's an amazing sounding pickup. Try a Junior, throw some overdrive on, and have some fun because they're a different animal. You've, if you've never played one, you're going to dig it. At least I think you will. All right. So the SG Junior 63, definitely one of my favorite guitars in this room. So this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while and I had the guitars in house. I figured let's shoot them out. Let's hear some P90s against a really fun blues backing track that feels great because great players like Ryan Medora and Derek Phillips are making it happen. You can get that track 
in their package. I'll put the link below for that. Um, it, it's not very expensive, but you get some really nice tracks to play along with and they're friends. I wanted to share it with you. So leave me some comments, leave me some questions about P90s, what you like, what you don't like. I'd love to hear from you. It's fun connecting with you guys. Speaking of connecting, you can always do so at my website, workingclassguitar.com. Lots of free lessons, lots of other good stuff too. So uh, jump in, check it out. Until next time, I'm Corey. I'll see you.